Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ban, and this is Pirates with Ban blog number 55. So, there's not a ton of stuff going on in the forum in terms of new threads. I did have uh, Rules for Thought number 3 was released, I think, yesterday. Uh, the Custom Ships thread is active as usual. The Facebook group has uh, kept up its, you know, rampant activity. There's a lot of people commenting and posting at the Facebook group. And the, the part 2 of the Fire and Steel set review podcast is actually going to be recorded on uh, Thursday. So that's going to be exciting. So we're going to finish that that set review up because we've got four people doing it. So we had to split it into two episodes. And the deal of the day, I didn't find a lot of stuff that looked too interesting on eBay. But this is a lot that was posted within the past 24 hours, I believe. And it says that it's 118 ships as per the description. Looks like they're mostly built. So kind of an interesting lot there. The price is decent, I guess, if it stays low, about $70, um, including shipping, at least for what I'm seeing is about $20 shipping. So I'll have a link to this in the description that you can check out. And I'm generally including links to the Revolution and Ocean's Edge boxes by Wild Loot Sellers. So those would probably be the deal of the day, if not for, you know, wanting to have some variety. So you can find links to those as well. Basically 36 packs of Revolution for 70 and 36 packs of Ocean's Edge for 40 basically, uh, both with free shipping, and you should get an, a tournament pack of LEs with the uh, OE box. And just a little minor thing, Hills Wholesale Gaming still does have the Mega Packs from Ocean's Edge on sale, 50% off, they're $3 each instead of 6 so not too not too enthused with the Mega Packs, because even the, even the Mega Cards from Ocean's Edge aren't all that rare, and then all the rest of the stuff is just basically two packs of OE, which is pretty cheap, so, but I guess theoretically it's still a solid deal here, because basically you're getting, you know, a pack of OE for about a dollar each, so that'd be like two dollars, and then you only pay a dollar for the special edition mega card, which isn't bad, especially if you get like the Ghost Walker, uh, which is a really good American canceling gunship, for example, so just something to keep in mind in case you're going to order from Hills Wholesale anyway. And the card of the day, we'll do sets 1 through 14 to include Return to Savage Shores, but we get set number 7, which is Mysterious Islands, I believe. Yes, because that came out after David Jones' Curse, which I know is set number 6. So MI, as it's abbreviated, has, I think, quite a lot of game pieces, and it goes to 307, including Mysterious Islands Convention Pack. So we'll go to 307, and we get 74. So if I guess, I think it's a French ship. That's my guess, and I feel like Le Petit Dauphine is around there, and I just saw a picture of her earlier today, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm off by six, so Petit is uh, number 80, but number 74 is today's card of the day, which is La Martinette, and this is a French four-masted uncommon ship, 12 points, four cargo, S move. Uh, cannons are 3S, 3L, 3L, 3S. And crew of any nationality may use their abilities on this ship. And she's got some basic flavor text to explain that ability. So, the problem here is the speed. For 12 points, if you're going to have a uh, four-master gunship for 12 points, um, you probably want to pay for more than what you're getting here. I don't know. I, I feel like the speed holds her back too much to be all that viable. And the ability is nice, but with S speed, you really need a lot more speed than that and you don't want to you don't want to start blowing a ton of points on the ship to get like griffin i mean you could use the limited edition version of griffin with a captain helmsman on the ship but you're much better off just getting other french gunships that are better like Le belle etoile and uh, a bunch of other ones there's some some really good french five masters in the 12 to 14 point range so this one you can see the artwork is a little bit boring a lot of cannons which is nice but for the french it's a little bit drab kind of kind of a very neutral colored ship, so not great artwork either, especially considering uh, how it's French. This is actually just a little random thing. I have two um, deck plate cards I use for measurement, for measuring uh, when I play. So the, uh, the King Edward, HMS King Edward from Spanish Main is my original measuring card that I like to use, but then I actually have La Martinette. I have a duplicate, I have a spare um, deck plate card of this ship uh, to use for measuring for my, like, traveling collection or whatever. Um, so anyway, just a little tidbit. Uh, sadly, that's one of the more interesting things about this ship for me, because she's just not not much to get excited about. Other than the speed, there's not, you know, it's, it's she's fine, but 
And the French have pretty decent named crews. They don't really need this ability all that much. It could lead to some decent combos, but when you only have S speed and 12 points to work with, it's it's not very it's not very an attractive option. So for me, I would use this with a captain and helmsman as like a numbers gunship in a large game, like in the oceans, um, just because they just run out of other things to launch. That, so they might use this, and they did. And uh, overall, game beast rating out of ten. I'd probably say maybe four, four point five or five out of ten. Probably four and a half out of ten. I guess it's not it's not a horrible ship by any means, but the speed holds it back so much to make it pretty much irrelevant and largely forgotten about for good reason. So she kind of kind of harsh, but she almost like deserves to be forgotten about because there's better French four masters, better French ships at this cost. Um, she doesn't stand out looks wise like a lot a lot of the other french ships do you could you can make a good case that they're the most aesthetic faction in a lot of ways so there's really not a lot to get excited about here i'm trying to find her on ebay but you know not a great ship so i wouldn't necessarily recommend purposely going after her but if you need her for the collection i'll i'll take a peek on ebay to see if she's around and uh picture of the day is uh i think this was taken a year ago today based on my what I searched for in my documents and I posted it on Instagram which is what you're seeing now it was a game of water world I believe played with Repkozai and we controlled two fleets each both 20 point fleets which is weird so instead of having us control a fleet apiece we split uh, we each controlled two 20 point fleets which is a fun way to change up your games and water world is actually a custom kind of not a full rule set necessarily but basically it's a custom like situational scenario game from Brett B45 that he's used with his play group for a while and uh so that's really cool and I'm going to put a link back in 2015 he, he uh he elaborated on the full rules for the water world scenario which I've played maybe a half dozen times maybe more something like that and it's a really fun uh way to play and I played with Xerix actually uh we played a, a weird game of it a while back as well so the water world rules are really exciting. So basically, you have a you have a home island fort, um, but you can still raid enemy um, forts from their gold. So you, you can dock there with like a home island raider. But um, wild islands sink when they have no normal treasure left. And then so then once all the gold is loaded onto ships, the game immediately ends when there was more no more dry ground. So it's a really interesting way to play. And I, I like it quite a lot. I would highly recommend checking it out. So I'll put a link to the rules and to the picture on Instagram in the description below. And I have it enlarged here on post images, but it's kind of, I didn't zoom in too much on Vassal when I took the picture. So it's a little blurry, but you can see the forts. There's different forts, um, the islands. Maybe I think one of them had probably disappeared by then. There's turtles happening. So, and I'll also try to link to at least one of the fleets I used in that game because it's a really weird fleet where Labelul, which I just posted on the Facebook group today actually for a picture, which is a pretty ship. Um, I loaded up Labelul, which is normally just a gold runner. You just put a helmsman on and then um, just use her as a gold runner. But I, since they were only 20 points fleets, I decided to optimize the ship in terms of crew to make her like a hybrid gunship. Um, so it was a pretty... It's a pretty wacky fleet, and for a 20-point fleet, I think it's pretty good. Didn't wind up, uh, wind up ending, winning the game, because uh, Kozai got more more gold in the end with one of his fleets, but it was still an enjoyable game. So, in the water, water World rules, I would highly recommend checking out and trying out. So, And they're good at any point level, so, um, so 100 points, it would be exciting. 200 points, like Xerix and I did. Um, or 20 points with like a bunch of fleets. So I highly recommend checking out Water World from uh, Brett B45. So as always, links in the description below. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more Pirates content. So thanks for watching.